Join the conversation on 6255-1206. The Canberra Weekender, 1206. 266. Great to be with you. Tatiana Clancy here with you. And it is time now for our regular bird watching segment. Neil Hermes is our resident ornithologist. Neil, welcome. Hi, Tatiana. How are you today? I'm good. Now, I can't for the life of me remember who suggested this. Maybe it was Judith or somebody yeah, a couple of weeks I'll, ago. It was a very good I idea. Remember. Neither can I, but whoever that um, our fantastic lady was, she suggested that you play a regular bird call and people have to guess it, which I love. So yep. if people fantastic. want to... Well, look, I've got one. I've got one lined up here. It's, I don't have the bird, but I've got a tape of the bird. No, this is um, good. Oh, oh wouldn't that be great? Play, yeah, actually, lift your game, Neil. Recognize it. Lift your game Go and have the it. actual bird there. No. Um, si- Are you getting that, Tatiana? I am. I am. If people want to guess that particular bird, 6255-1206. Lovely. Any, any any clues, Neil, or is it an easy one to start well, us off? A very regular bird around Canberra, mm-hmm. um, a very pretty call, one that people tend to be able to remember. It's one of those distinctive calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a particularly large bird, let's say. Okay. Oh, and then that's just a, a regular dog in the background. I love it. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, now, a few bird stories. Um, and I, I love this one. The two-minute um, noodle-loving parrot. What a quirky story, yes. A, a little bit of an odd one, really. It's uh, an eclectus parrot that this gentleman is travelling Australia with. Um, eclectus parrots are interesting because Uh, They're one of the few birds where, from our point of view, the female is a more colourful bird than the male. Mm -hmm. So the the um, the male is green, but this is a very large red parrot that he has. Australian parrot he has travelling with him in his car. But the quirky part of the story is that he believes that his parrot likes um, uh, John Williams and noodles. Oh, Um, and Paul Kelly apparently, which I'm I'm very pleased about. It might reflect a little bit on his own personal. Rather than the preferences of an eclectic, uh, of an eclectus parrot, perhaps. But look, this bird's very, they're very brightly coloured and beautiful birds, and apparently it's become the subject of some social media coverage. I love it. Apparently, he's he's pimped up his ride um, with, uh, <laughs> which I love, uh, complete with a bird swing and food bowls. So that's yeah. Look, it's a lovely, it's a lovely, lovely, friendly story, and uh, hopefully the parrot is cared for well. I'm sure it is. Um, but, um, yes, uh, the eclectus parrot travelling Australia, listening to John Williams. There you go. I love it so much. Uh, Neil, uh, if uh, people, because I rudely spoke over the top of it, do you want to play that bird call again for us? I can indeed. There you go. There you go. And as I said, it's not a particularly large bird. Okay. That? Okay. That's good. That's good. Not too easy. You don't want, we don't want to give it away. So 6255-1206 is our number if you can guess that bird. And uh, I don't think we've got a prize, but you've just got bragging rights really as to, to be the first person to to enter this um, dubious competition. But it's, it's fantastic. Well, you, maybe we'll talk about a prize. Maybe we can do a sort of, you know, drawer of the month or something let's let's have a look at that but okay anyway, all right this, this is bragging rights at this stage yes i love workshopping ideas on air yeah this is good <laughs> this is good this is this is how live radio works i love it Absolutely. now our next uh story is how birds are adapting to the climate crisis yeah well this is a, uh, what's been uh, happening is that in a whole range of studies around the world we're finding that birds are getting smaller yeah um and it's a very it it it, it, it it's just, they're very small marginal sort of uh, uh, measurements, but uh, there's this particular study in the states where they've been collecting. Sadly, they've been collecting birds that have hit skyscrapers uh, over many, many years. So I had this long sample of birds um, that they'd found dead, and uh, they were able to measure the birds uh, from uh, several decades and discovered that, in fact, yes, um, even in that sample, the birds seem to be getting smaller. But the curious thing, and, and that's consistent with a very old. Um, uh, understanding we have about animals and uh, birds and mammals in particular that uh, birds that are closer to the equator in the warmer climates tend to be smaller than similar birds or mammals um, in uh, in colder climates. You know, polar bears are bigger, 
closer to the or tigers are bigger are bigger when they're closer to the uh, uh, the poles and the, the, the species that occur say in India. Mm-hmm. So it's a pattern that we we know about. Um, but this quirky this this the rather quirky element to this story um, this week is that the the brain size seems to mean that the larger brain sized birds relatively uh, seem to to be managing better in terms of this. So birds like Sparrows have very large brains compared to their body size, hmm. and they're not uh, they're not as affected. So there is a question around whether or not um, there's something else about the birds that um, uh, is also being affected, and different species are being affected differently. So, yeah, um, these are very difficult studies because you've got to do them over a very long period of time and get big samples. So, uh, but interesting pattern that are left. Yeah, absolutely. Neil, we have Chris from Queenie on the line who's going to have a go at the bird. Chris, how are you? Oh, well, thank you, Tatiana. And you? Good, thank you. Now, you're you're our first ever entrant to our um, exciting new competition. <laughs> what, uh, what, what did you think this bird was? I thought it might be the Australian mudlark, kiwi. No, no. Oh, it's not. Uh, okay, I thought I, had a, I thought I heard a little bit of it. That's all right. Yeah, no, mudlarks have a more um, uh, fluty sort of call, I'd suggest. Um, um, but uh, And mudlarks are also known as peewees by some people. They're the, the black and white birds that are uh, similar looking to a magpie, but a bit smaller and then stalk around on our lawns chasing the insects. Um, very common bird around Canberra, but no, not, not the mudlark. Can I just can I just add that I very much enjoyed your segment last week on that Richard Cole. On the on the common cold. Oh I, yes. Yeah. I really yeah. wanted to know. I've got a heap of them around here, and I wanted to know how the how the how the parents were reunited with the um, with the you know the the, the nestling, you know because yeah, well, I thought that yeah they had to they had to go away together otherwise the baby wouldn't know what to do would they? That's right. And just to re- refresh, uh, Tatiana, you weren't online last week. No, that's right. About the fact I mean, sorry, that, Tatiana. That's okay. We, we were talking about the fact that the cuckoos fly down from Queensland. Mm-hmm. They find the, the the wattle bird's nest. They lay the egg in the wattle bird's nest. The poor old wattle bird then adopts the cuckoo and raises it. But the cuckoos then hang around Canberra. And when the, the young cuckoo is big enough to need to be flying, the parents come back and effectively take the chick back from the wattle bird <laughs> because otherwise the young cuckoos wouldn't know where to go in Queensland when they migrate. So right at this time of the year, there's a lot of uh, calling and and, uh, and and adjustments going on as wattle birds are giving up their chicks, um, which are now quite big, um, and the adult coals, the adult cuckoos, are, are, are reuniting with them around where they've laid the eggs. And um, and then saying no, we're actually your parents. You better come with us. That's a very flawed adoption process. Can I just say that's it's dreadful. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's look, but it's, the, the 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 issue for us is, of course, all this has a commotion around it, and people are hearing all this stuff with the cook, the coals around the yard, and mm. birds are flying backwards and forwards, and sorting out all the various paternal arrangements. Well, Chris, it was a good guess, though. It well, was, thank it you. Was and, and, and look, we might do a peewee or a, a, a mudlark or a peewee on another on another day. <laughs> I won't get it that day. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Chris. That's oh, no. that's fantastic. Uh, so, Neil, uh, I hadn't heard of the mudlark. I think I, I'd always heard them referred to as peewees as well. Yeah, but they're, because they're such a, a, a ubiquitous bird, they occur all around Australia and they're very familiar to people. They have a whole range of different names. They're called mudlarks or peewees or... Murray magpies, uh, a whole range of different names. But it's the same bird, a little black and white bird, stalks around on our lawns. The males and females can be told apart easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and a very sort of... Uh, they often fl- they make a mud nest. And they often flutter around. The, the males don't like their image. And you'll often see them fluttering around um, rear vision mirrors of cars and car parks <laughs> as they try and force the, uh, the uh, interloper away that's actually themselves. Oh, that's hilarious. They've got such personalities, don't they, They birds? They They really, really do. And look, our last story today is about um, hope for the endangered mallee fowl. Yeah, now, mallee fowl are a bird that I've had a lot to do with over the years, and I find them a fascinating bird. A large turkey-sized bird that occurs in in mallee uh, right across uh, southern Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, in South Australia. 
It occurred in huge areas back before the First World War. A lot of the land has been cleared for wheat in, the, in time. And these birds have been reduced down and down and down. And, of course, many people would know that the Mallee Valley is famous for digging a mound in the, in the Mallee, laying its eggs, uh, and then essentially monitoring this huge compost heap, which then the chicks then emerge from and run out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the parents never see the chicks. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine who's young, a young fellow, Canberra, a Canberra young man, who, uh, Locke Reed, who does a lot of photography, and he was stalking one of these mounds, and a chick came up and he photographed it as it actually emerged from the mound, but there was an adult mallee fowl nearby and the adult was scared to death of this thing when it came out and ran away. So uh, it's a it's an, it's an extraordinary way of um, managing um, a nest. But what happens is these tiny chicks come out, they never see their parents, and they're very vulnerable to pigs and foxes and other predators. Uh, and sadly, these birds have been declining uh, right across the state uh, uh, of New South Wales. And they're now starting to do some projects where they're taking eggs out of mounds and then rearing the chicks and then re- re-releasing them into protected areas. But the trick with that, of course, is that we have to make sure that the things that have been affecting them, like the foxes and the pigs, have been removed. So, look, it's a very optimistic program. I, I hope to be a little bit involved with it myself. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a great, great news story for the Mallee Fell that we're able to do this. Fantastic. Uh, Nolene's on the line with another guest for our bird. Hi, Nolene. Hello, my dear. Hello. Is it, <laughs> is it a willy wag tail? No. Also, another It's not. And they have, oh. No, and they have a very chirpy sort of call like, like, like this particular bird. Um, yes. And also, a bird a bit like the cuckoo that calls all night and all day. Um, wow. Good, good guess. Quite close, but look, we'll have a willy wagtail in uh, a future week. Oh. Fantastic, Nolene will be all over it when that's okay. Oh, no. we, are, we are running out of time, Neil. So you might, Thank you might you. have to give it away. Thanks, Nolene. You might have to give it away. So the bird that I'm playing at the moment mm-hmm. is Australia's smallest bird. Oh, okay. It's, it's called the weevil. Oh. And weevil is tiny. It's uh, 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 oh, it's 10 centimetres long or something. It fits in the palm of your hand. Tiny little bill. Um, very, very small bird. Yellowy, greeny colour. Uh, flits around in the foliage after um, insects and other things. Um, but it has this beautiful little sweet peepery sort of call that uh, is very distinctive. Often heard, and you often don't see the bird, but you do hear it and you know that weevils are about. So... Australia's tiniest bird and very common in Canberra Garden. Fantastic. Well, we'll invite you on our trivia team, Neil. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Neil, thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll catch you again next week. Always fun, Tatiana. Ciao. You too. Neil Hermes is our resident ornithologist.